Tonight, politics and religion. Evangelist Franklin Graham comes to the state capitol to rally conservatives around religious freedom issues and to encourage them to vote in the March 1st primary. Will Graham's rhetoric amp up the debate over religious freedom? And we'll look at a new front in that battle. Should public high school athletes be allowed to wear religious slogans on their uniforms? Lawmaker starts right now. Welcome to Lawmakers, I'm Bill Nygut. Well, it's been a really big day, as we said, for religious freedom issues, both inside and outside of the Gold Dome. Shelby Lynn is the latest on what's turned out to be a very big topic today. Hi, Shelby. That's right, Bill. Religious liberty was the topic of the day. Outside the Capitol, Franklin Graham has had and his pitch to evangelical voters. But first, we begin with two religious liberty measures. Both bills would prevent athletic associations from banning religious expressions by athletes in Georgia high schools. HB 870 would allow athletes to wear a religious symbol on a sports headband, for example, as long as headbands were allowed at the competition as part of an athletic uniform. Representative Brian Strickland is the bill's sponsor. As long as the expression does not conflict with the rules of the event or the safety of the players, it cannot be prohibited. This is making sure we're following the rules of the game and not just picking and choosing arbitrarily which expression will take place. My understanding is wearing a headband in a track meet is not considered to be out of uniform. And Chairman Martin, I'll say this, this bill will clarify this moving forward for sure. There's no debate left now to be had. If you have rules in place that say what you can and cannot wear, we follow those rules. Outside of that, you can't pick and choose the kind of expression you have on those articles of clothing. The bill would also direct the Georgia High School Association to permit schools to schedule games against each other if the schools want to. The bill had wide support in the House. I want us to move this bill on, though, people. Let's move it. Let's get it through. Let's pass it because they don't meet till April. And we want to see that we have it sitting there. So I ask your favorable vote yes on this piece of legislation. Members of the House approved the bill by a wide margin, 136 to 25. It now goes to the Senate for consideration. Meanwhile, in the Senate, the Education and Youth Committee took up a nearly identical measure. SB 309 would also allow religious expression or symbols on high school sports uniforms. Plus, it would also let schools in the Georgia High School Association play school teams not affiliated with the GHSA. Glenn White is the president of the association and says GHSA has to follow the rules of the National Federation. We want to be in uh, compliance with National Federation's rules, but we're looking for common ground how we can make that work as far as GHSA rules, National Federation rules, and what the two bills want us to do. We want to find common ground so we can work this all out. White says he does understand how it might appear GHSA was violating people's rights to express a religious belief, but he also says the GHSA and its national counterpart have rules and regulations that must be followed, too. So I can understand why they would be concerned about that. Uh, I hope we also understand that we are an athletic association and we promote athletic contests. We are not a religious organization. But we seek common ground in order to make this work for all of us. The House version of the bill specifies that GHSA must be in compliance with the national rules when it comes to sports uniforms. But I think what we're concerned about are things like this with a headband, which in some sports is worn, you know, and what you have on the headband. For example, it could be a symbol of the manufacturer, a Nike swoosh, or the underarm symbol, whatever it might be, those kind of things. A high school track athlete touched off the debate over religious symbols on sports uniforms when he wore a headband with a Bible verse on it, then was disqualified from the track meet after refusing to take it off. The other part of both bills involves allowing GHSA schools to play teams outside of the organization. The Georgia High School Association Board of Trustees, we've already voted to approve the interleague play with the Christian Association. That has been voted on, and that will become part of our bylaws in April when the full committee meets. Now, the part about how we're going to display these symbols and those kind of things, that that's something we're still working on. The Senate Education and Youth Committee unanimously passed SB 309. It now heads to the Senate floor for debate. 
Bill, we know you'll get the very latest on this issue from Representative Brian Strickland, the author of the House measure, when you talk with him on Lawmakers tonight. Meanwhile, an update on another religious liberty bill. The House is scheduled to take up the Pastor Protection Act tomorrow. That's the measure that would allow a minister to refuse to perform a same-sex marriage if it violates their re religious beliefs. Finally tonight, we mentioned earlier the big crowd that turned out at the Capitol today to hear Franklin Graham preach about the need for God in American politics. He didn't take sides either when it comes to political parties. Franklin Graham. <laughs> It was one of the largest crowds yet at the new Liberty Plaza across the street from the Capitol. Several thousand people turned out to hear Franklin Graham, the oldest son of evangelist Billy Graham, on his 2016 Decision America tour. Graham is encouraging everyone to vote in this election, but he says they should only support candidates who put God first. There's not one political person or party that's going to turn this system around. I have zero hope in the Democratic Party. All right, and before you Republicans start high-fiving each other, I have zero hope in the Republican Party. I have zero hope in the Tea Party or anybody else. And the only hope for this nation is God. Graham also called legalized abortion and same-sex marriage some of the greatest sins in the U.S. His tour is part of an effort to energize evangelical voters across the country as he tours all 50 states. Bill, conservatives are hoping for a large evangelical turnout, which could sway the presidential election their way, and even congressional and state races, too. Well, that's it from the Capitol. We're sending it back to you in the studio, Bill. All right, Shelby, thanks so much for your report tonight. Boy, we have an awful lot to talk about in terms of religious liberty and politics. I'm happy to welcome Representative Carla Drenner, who is a Democrat from Avondale Estates, and Representative Brian Strickland, a Republican from McDonough. Thank you both for uh, being here. Um, Representative Strickland, we want to talk in a minute about uh, the bill that uh, uh, Shelby just reported on. Yes. But let's set it in that larger context. This enormous rally today, I, I think the capacity on the plaza there is about 3,500 people, and they had it filled, and were turning people away. What does that tell you about a thirst that you see uh, in, in Georgia for the kinds of religious liberty bills that are floating around at the Capitol right now? Well, I think people feel like they're under attack. I think people feel like right now your way of life as a Christian is under attack. And what they're asking us to do at the state level is find ways to protect that moving forward. I think that's why you had such a big rally there today. Look, we saw in the 1990s what happens when Christians come together politically. You know, they elected large majorities in the House in the 90s with that. And so this is, this is once again Reverend Graham saying, come together as Christians, come together with your common interests. We're under attack with our beliefs, stand up for what you believe in, and show support to those that will support that in office as well. Can you imagine that um, someone like me, who is Jewish, might hear what you're saying and feel like I'm outside and left out of what you just said. Yeah, and you should not be, because when I say we're I'm talking people of faith, whatever your faith is, it's not <clears> saying <throat> a certain Christian faith is under attack or a Jewish faith is under attack. It's saying the idea of having faith at all is under attack right now. That's what we're seeing. And whether it's real or not, I think people feel that. And the fact that we have opposition to a lot of these measures that address these issues tells me it is real out there. And so it's not saying that believing in God is under attack, but having faith overall right now is under attack politically. Representative Drenner, uh, do you feel faith is under attack? Do you agree with Representative Strickland? I, no, I, I really, I guess from their perspective, I, I, I can accept that they feel that way. I'm not really sure what is driving that. Uh, that thought process. Uh, perhaps it's the Supreme Court decision. On gay uh, marriage. On gay marriage uh, last year. From my perspective, this is the first uh, session, that, that legislative session that Georgia has, has had post that decision. And I think that maybe that's why this feeling of attack is is so prevalent right now. Is that is that seem right to you? I mean, is the gay marriage decision by the court part of what this I is all about? I think that's part of it. It's more than just a gay marriage decision. Sure. I think the best way to do this is to look at the bills that have been filed, look okay. at the measures we're considering, and you'll see example after example of things we're trying to protect. And so versus grouping into some you know national argument about what this might be about, let's look at what we're trying to protect here, and that'll tell you what this is about. 
So uh, it, it, let's take a look at one of those bills that's going to be on the floor of the House tomorrow, and that's the so-called Pastor Protection Act. Uh, this is a measure that very early on, uh, in fact, well before the session started, uh, the Speaker, David Ralston, uh, proposed this legislation. It is the sense of many observers that he proposed uh, this as a way of heading off what perhaps some people saw as a, more extreme measures on this. So all pastor protection does is say uh, that no uh, 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 minister, rabbi, spiritual leader has to marry somebody, a couple they don't want to marry. They don't have to marry a gay couple if they think it's wrong. Well, that is uh, is already law. Uh, there's already ministerial exceptions out there that would protect people of faith from having to do something that that they're not comfortable doing, that does not subscribe to the tenets of their faith. There's already laws out there that that protect people from being discriminated against because of their religion. There's federal laws that uh, protect religious freedom people and their religious freedom beliefs system. I'm, I'm just curious as to why, why now, why the large volume of bills, when a lot of what's already uh, been, been done has uh, protects so individuals if, if, who have religious viewpoints. So if in fact the theory that the speaker wants this bill because he's worried about bills that go further than this, that, that many in the business community are worried about. And this seems to be a, a, a solution that is more palatable. Why not say, great, let's support it, and maybe we can put the others to rest? Well, I can't uh, speculate on why the Speaker supports a bill or why the Speaker does not support a bill. This bill, from my perspective, is not needed. Uh, no matter if he supports it or not, because it's already in law that ministers do not have to do okay. this. In a general way, uh, uh, Representative Drenner just draws a line. She doesn't want to cross that line in any of the religious liberty bills, I suspect. Pastor protection, mm. uh, is it likely to get pretty widespread support tomorrow, do you think? I think it will. We'll see tomorrow when the vote takes place. But I think you'll see Democrats, Republicans come together for that bill. I mean, look. It's kind of a sad day, I think, in our state and our country, we're even debating this issue. But all we're saying with the Pass Protection Act is if you do not want to perform a ceremony, it doesn't say whether it's because it's two men, two women, a man or woman, whoever it is, if you don't want to perform a ceremony, you shouldn't have to. The state shouldn't force you to do something you don't want to do based on religious beliefs. It also goes so far as to say that um, if you don't want to have to work on a Saturday or Sunday, or have your business open on a Saturday and Sunday, you don't have to do that as well. And it also says that if you're a church building, you shouldn't be forced to you have your rooms reserved for something you don't believe in. All this is trying to say is, let's put your faith first. Let you make decisions based on your faith. Don't force you to do things that are against your faith, no matter what that is. Well, I, that's a broader interpretation of what pastor protection, uh, the pastor protection bill does than, than I'd been aware of. It's interesting you're, you're, you're saying that. So I want to go back and, and we'll watch that bill very carefully. And let me say, I cited the original version of the bill. It may have mm -hmm. changed in committee, okay. but those were three things the original bill did when it was first filed. Okay, right, well, right. Well, you know, Saturday and Sunday, there's already a religious accommodation in the Title VII laws. So again, from my perspective, this is, uh, this is just a re reiteration of what f the federal law already does. Okay. So if it makes people feel in, uh, you know, doubly protected, okay, but it's really n not a necessary measure from my perspective. Is there any politics behind um, any of the, well, let me, let me go back to past. There's always politics. I, you're, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm a young guy, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I mean by that. Um, many, you're all up for re-election. And uh, last year, uh, many members were uh, put in a position of having to vote for, not having to, but felt somewhat compelled to vote for the transportation bill, which is, is viewed as a tax hike because it essentially is. And, and there, is there some way in which a measure like that <clears throat> helps a Republican go back to a district and say, I got you the, I'm, I'm fighting for your, your Christian faith, for your religious faith. Is there anything to that? No, first off, we're not forced to vote for anything up here. Everybody I, votes their own conscience. I, and I can tell you, we get a chance to vote however you want to vote. <laughs> right. um, but second, no, I don't think voters are that stupid. 
I mean, voters, voters are asking <laughs> us to represent them, not just the election year, but both years are up here. And um, you hear a lot of people say, and no offense to, to Carla at all, but people say, well, it's already federal law. Federal law doesn't always apply to state law. We're talking about what the state can do. That's what we're looking at here. And so I think it's a very practical bill, practical measure um, that says simply, if you don't want to do something, you shouldn't be forced by a state to do it, and it goes, goes against your Christian beliefs. And here's what most people would say. The fact that there's opposition to that tells you something's going on. That's where a lot of this fear comes from. Why would anyone want to oppose a bill like that? Okay, let me let me go to another. Uh, can go I, ahead. Can of I comment on, on what of he course. said? Because I, I think that's really inflammatory. I, the Republican Party uh, is the party of not uh, creating bigger government. And yet they're very comfortable making bigger government around laws that already exist just to make people feel better. And, and I, I take issue with that. This is not something that is, that is uh, necessary. If you go and you pull some data from uh, the, uh, the federal uh, EEOC uh, website and you look at the number of claims that have been filed in terms of religious discrimination, do you know it's the lowest category of, of discriminatory cases that have been filed across America? <laughs> So why is this, uh, why are so many people feeling as if their faith is attacked other than the fact that a Supreme Court decision, the gay marriage, the gay decision. marriage decision happened? Because you know what, if you look across the country like I did over the last five years, and you see as, as the uh, Supreme Court, as the courts across the country, uh, nullified the same-sex marriage cases. These RIFRA bills increase exponentially. So you can't, from my perspective, you can't say that the two are not linked. I understand. On the other hand, the the proponents of RIFRAs uh, like to say they can, it's hard to point to a state where a RIFRA has, in fact, there's been a case in which RIFRA has stopped uh, someone from from uh, 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 doing business the way they want to, that sort of thing. I mean, I, I see both sides of that, right? That's correct. Here's the question, if you want to talk about RIFRA overall, here's the question you'd ask someone. Do you believe that the government should have the ability to interfere with your religious freedom for no reason at all? If your answer is yes and the conversation stops, if you say no, well, do you believe that should be at least a compelling interest they're trying to advance? What, what, what's That's the question. So, okay. This is what we go through when we talk to Josh McCoon about SB 129, uh, which he has said over and over again has nothing to do with gays and lesbians and business. But what I just heard you say is, let's take the classic argument of the baker with a wedding cake. Should a baker be, uh, uh, should a, a law protect a baker who doesn't want to bake a cake for a gay and lesbian couple? Yes or no? Well. I think, yes, it should protect that person. I don't believe, I believe the Republican Party stands for freedom. Okay. okay. And I believe that we as government shouldn't force people to do things they don't want to do. Shouldn't force somebody to provide a service overall from a general standpoint. Um, but at the same time, that's always the classic example you get. Of but course. if you actually look down and look at what the bill actually says, that's not what the bill says. And the bill has been tested time and time again across the country. We've yet to see an example like that when it comes to religious freedom overall. And again, instead of going back to the general statements about the two debates out there you see over RIFRA overall, let's look at individual examples, individual bills we have that we're passing out of the House and hopefully the Senate as well to address religious freedom. All right. We, you have about tw you get 20 seconds to, to respond to that if you want to. I, well, uh, the religious freedom bill uh, originally, the federal bill, was not designed for what it is trying to be applied for today. The, it, the original religious freedom had everything to do with the fact that the Supreme Court nullified uh, uh, the state government's ability to do what Brian just got through saying. Mm -hmm. So the states began uh, passing their own bills, right? But now the application is such that it's not just about a government's compelling interest. It goes into a corporation and what a corporation can do. Can a corporation sell to people they don't like? All right. We've got to take a break. 
you know as well as I do that Senator McCoon would tell you that nothing in his bill would go into anything but would would it would only apply to government. Now you may not agree with that, but I think we have That's to say that McCoon has said that over and over <laughs> again. Just all right. Look, we've got a lot more to talk about. We want to talk about uh, the measure that Shelby uh, talked yes. about uh, when we come back from break. Um, but before we do. Um, there was good news for transportation and education under the Gold Dome today. The state Senate passed a supplemental budget with over $1.1 billion in increased funding. Senate Budget Chair Jack Hill explains. The majority of those funds, some $758 million, are the proceeds from House Bill 170 that we are appropriating to get to work on the highways around the state. Of course, they're tied to HB 170, the transportation bill that we passed last year. One other aside to the revenue total is uh, in, addition, in addition to the lottery revenues in the amended budget, it pushes it, I believe, for the first time over $1 billion in lottery expenditures that we're, or we're expending for education in Georgia. And that's a, that's a great milestone, I believe. In fact, the appropriation now in the amended budget pushes it to $1.01 billion dollars going to education from the state lottery. Representative John Pezold is a Republican from Fortson. He represents House District 133. He was sworn into the General Assembly in 2013. This second term lawmaker tells us the people at his local movie theater know him by name, not because he's there to see the movies. He says it's because he has a serious addiction to movie theater popcorn and has even figured out that it'll stay fresh in the fridge for up to a week. A fresh round of discussions when lawmakers continue. Finding any moose, let alone one with a newborn, in this terrain is a daunting challenge. But I got lucky. This is going to be a challenging 12 months, but I'm really excited to see how this animal survives its first year in the Canadian Rockies. Moose populations are declining, and scientists are racing to discover why. Any calf born now really has the deck stacked against it. Tonight at 8 on Why Wednesday, only on GPB. Did you know that early Georgia lawmakers determined we needed a law against maiming? On this date, February 10th in 1787, Governor George Matthews signed an act making it illegal to willfully or maliciously cut out or disable the tongue, put out an eye, slit the nose, or bite or cut off the ear, nose, or lip of any person within this state. The penalty for a first offense included a hefty fine and having to stand in the pillory for two hours. Those were tough times. Very tough yeah, times. Very fortunate. <laughs> Welcome back to Lawmakers. Our guests are uh, Representative Carla Drenner of Avondale Estates and Representative Brian Strickland uh, from McDonough. Uh, so before we go into talking about your bill, H-70, uh, we owe you a little extra time. You know, the did you knows that we do every show, uh, we get that information from either the law legislators themselves or from your office. Right. We did one about you about a week or so <laughs> ago, and we talked about your two cats. In fact, you do have two cats, yes? Yes, and I cannot blame my office. That's me not um, <laughs> adequately responding to someone from, from yes. this show. Well, I do have two cats, but the problem is when you all ran the segment, there was no mention of my wife, no mention of my little cockapoo at home either. And so I had to go home that night and explain to them why I would just talk about my two cats. And I got a lot of grief the next day at the Capitol from my friends. And what's your, really wife's two cats. what's your wife's name? Lindsay. Lindsay Strickland. Lindsay, we apologize. And Boo is the dog, and she's watching. <laughs> and Boo. And Boo Radley. Boo Radley. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, to get back to a serious subject, HB 870. Yes. Uh, you got a big vote. On this bill today. Yes. Um, and, and there are two components to it, right? The first one is it protects the right of a high school. It, it, it isn't that it protects the right, it forbids the high school, the athletic association, right? right? from setting a rule that would forbid a student athlete from wearing a religious slogan. Have I got that part of it correct? Somewhat correct. Okay. The bill does two things. Let me first tell you why I filed it. I filed it because back home in Henry County, I learned last year, I had two large private schools in my district that because they're members of two different private school associations, 
they couldn't even play each other in a practice game. They share a cross-country track, yet they could not have a practice meet there because Georgia High School Association decided to pick winners and losers. They come in and say, these private schools can play us public schools, but when you do so, you can't play any more private schools. And so it, and at first I said, like, this makes no sense what you're talking about. And I started researching it and realized they were right. The association was doing that, picking which schools could play. And these usually their smaller schools were getting left out. And so parents decide to send their kid to a certain school because it works them academically. Yet they can't play sports. They gotta travel around the state to find a place to play sports. So the first thing the bill did is it says that if two schools want to play each other, they can. If they agree and write and they want to play voluntarily, let the schools decide who plays, okay. not this big private entity. Okay. But Talk about the religious slogan. Yes, and a lot of the press came from another part of the bill that says that if you're going to allow expression, don't pick and choose which expression you're going to allow. What the bill really says is have rules in place. Follow the rules of that event. The rules are always going to trump. So there was a talk, I think, early on I saw in the segment, um, the segue of this as well, to talk about whether or not we're following the federal, national rules or the state rules, local rules. doesn't matter. As long as you're following some rules and those rules are in place, that way you don't arbitrarily decide what type of expression will take place. All right. So uh, GHSA has set its rules in compliance with the National That's High right. School Association, right? Right. And your measure puts them out of compliance if it passes? No, it does not. Okay, because that's a misunderstanding. That's a misunderstanding. Ben. I'm happy to get a chance to correct it. This is what the bill says. If you allow headbands, you can't pick and choose what type of headbands you allow. Now, you could pass another rule that says you can only have Nike logo on there, nothing else. That's fine, as long as you have rules in place. Okay. The whole idea is to avoid any more back and forth about whether or not a headband was allowed or was not allowed. Of course, all this controversy, Representative Drenner, came because of the student who mm -hmm. was disqualified for having a biblical verse on his headband. Um, and on, on, uh, uh, on our show, Political Rewind, on the radio this afternoon, uh, Congress, former Congressman Buddy Darden said, that what worries him a little bit uh, is it's one thing if the rules uh, allow for a Christian slogan, the community probably support that. But what happens if a, a satanic worshiper sure. wants to put a slogan like that on a headband? Or given our uh, Islamophobia in many parts of the state, somebody wants to put praise be Allah, you, you start getting into a slippery slope from your point of view? Yeah, it, well, that was the reason I voted against the bill today. I don't think that the intent, that, uh, the intent of the author uh, is to have any of those things happen. However, uh, with this creates a slippery slope, as, as you said, in that the original intention of the bill may be one thing, but somebody else may, may apply it in a totally different way. And, and I'm just afraid that I, I think students should be able to express themselves religiously. However, if it's a sincerely held religious belief, mm -hmm. as we talk about in RIFRA, what if it says something really derogatory, but it's a sincerely held religious belief? Then, then what? That could happen. Well, I guess anything could happen. Okay. But let's be honest. What we're talking about is in this situation was a Bible verse. And so I don't, in my opinion, if you're going to allow expression, this is what the bill says. Again, the party I'm from, to me, is all about freedom. That's what I believe right. in is freedom. Right. If you're going to allow expression, don't pick and choose the type of expression. So if we allow a Bible verse, someone else puts ISIS across their forehead, maybe we want to change our mind. Maybe we want to say we're no longer going to allow anything to be worn, which is what the bill allows. It's don't pick and choose which thing, but let's, that's not happening right now. Well, one thing I think is important to point out here, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're an attorney. There is nothing, a, it may be out of compliance with Georgia GHSA rules, but from a constitutional point of view, from a Supreme Court point of view, a student who chooses on his own or her own to uh, have a religious slogan on a headband is not uh, doing anything to violate uh, constitutional law or the law. That's perfectly permissible, right? Unless a coach says, wear that slogan, right? Right, right. Again. This, this to me is another incident where uh, this party talks about uh, smaller government but passes a law or are in the process of passing a law. All right. I, I'm sorry. I got to interrupt you because sure. they're telling me that the problem is the GHSA has rules that uh, prevent this sort of thing, right? And that's what you're correcting. As long as they set their own rules, gotcha. then we're fine. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to rush you out of here. It's been a great okay. discussion. We are done for tonight. That's a wrap for day 19 of the 2016 session with 21 days left on the legislative calendar. 
Very glad you could be with us tonight. I'm Bill Nygut. We are here on Political Rewind Radio every Wednesday and Friday. Hope you'll join us there. Have a good evening.